So I wanted to get into some aspects of dealing with load cell readings that I've been dealing with on the motor dyno and kind of the process of how we got into this kind of method of uh, calibration in the first place. A really important thing when you're doing bench testing is to be constantly, constantly critical of your own results especially when you're confident that you calibrated things correctly. Like you always have to have uh, to sanity check the, the numbers that you're getting. So it's really easy to fall into that and just think everything is fine because, well, you know everything should be fine. The load cell is one of those things. It's a really simple instrument, uh, particularly when you're we're using an off-the-shelf load cell amplifier, so we don't have to deal with uh, with the amplification circuit or temperature compensation or any of that stuff. Like we just assume that that's it's taken care of for us. The only things that you have to do is you take a, a reading with no weight on it, and then you put a known weight on it and take another reading, and that gives you your offset value and a scale value that lets you read exactly what the the real weight on the load cell is so it's really easy to just do that and you can put your test weight on and see that it reads the right number every time and get a result and we'd get uh, a result like this this is a, an early proving run on uh, on the dyno and uh, what we might say is that obviously we have a, uh, a kind of a drop in efficiency as we get to higher RPMs over about 75% throttle. All of this is, is much lighter colored than the uh, lower RPM. This is uh, the, the darker is higher efficiency. And the power delivery is not very uh, even and, and equal as well. Like you'll notice down low that every single um, throttle value uh, is giving us a, a fairly evenly spaced amount of torque. And then the difference between 95% and 90% throttle is very close. So as we go from 80 to 95, we're getting a big jump of power and then it's hitting a flat spot and jumping up again to 100%. Except that's totally, totally wrong. All of this is bad data. Despite the calibration of the load cell being totally fine and the test weight measuring uh, correctly. And that kind of brings me back to the second like major point in doing bench testing is repeatability is everything. If you you have to be able to do the same test multiple times and get the same result each time. If you can't repeat your test and get a repeat of the numbers, your numbers are not worth anything. And I knew that this was bad data because I'm comparing it against other data that I'm collecting at the same time. In this case, um, I'm looking at my RPM data. And this is not from the uh, same exact test as that previous chart, but this is exactly what my RPM data looks like on, on all of these tests. And you'll notice how at every single throttle value, each of these traces is at a different throttle value. Um, the spacing between each throttle value is very even and very smooth. This isn't uh, filtered data, this is unfiltered RPM data and the data is clean and every single test that I run returns exactly the same RPM. There's no variance or noise or you know things going up and down. So I'm really confident that the RPM data is valid and we can see that we are getting that even spacing that you would expect by having an even throttle increment from test to test. So what's giving us this these offsets here? Let's look at just the actual thrust values that we're getting on the load cell. This is the uh, torque readings for all of those tests. And you can make out the basic profile of the test. We let the entire setup sit for one second with everything turned off and we get our initial measurement, including our zeroing. Um, then we spin, uh, idle the motor up and do some uh, internal calibration. Spin the motor up to full speed, apply the brake, which gets us to full torque, and then we shut the motor down and then idle again, or uh, not idle, but have the uh, everything turned off, the motor uh, stopped, and uh, get our post zeroing phase just as a confidence test. And you can see in the uh, torque values, those same weird gaps that we're seeing in the overall efficiency chart where uh, they're you know very close and there's odd spacing. You know, here we have a big gap and then these two um, torque values are laid right on top of each other and something here is not right. We've probably already noticed that tail section here, these are both with everything stopped. There's no torque on the, the torque arm at all. So why does it, it not return to zero at the end of the test? 
this variance here is almost certainly what's causing all of our offset up there but there's nothing really obvious like it's, it doesn't look like you know the load cell isn't just knocked you know halfway through and it spikes up or anything like that so where do we get this offset from and can we compensate for it so the most obvious thing to uh to do here as well let's just say uh you know the data we're most interested here is at the uh, near closer to the end of the test so let's just zero out all of our load cell values uh at the end instead of at the beginning and then we get a chart that looks like this we're still able to zero everything out easily uh and uh you know you get the the inverse uh at the head where all of these are offset but the spacing here hasn't actually improved any. Even though this is zeroing a lot closer to where our, our peak values are, uh, like there's this huge gap between 100% and 95%, and these two tests are practically on top of each other. And if we look at the, the resulting torque graph, this is actually even worse than it was um, the first time. And this is the same data, the exact same data. We're just trying to uh, calibrate out our zero point and fix this drift that we're seeing in the load cell. So you can look at these two and see how the, the values have shifted around and the spacing between all of these is just completely out of whack. So if we take another look at the torque charts, the other like important commonality in the test is we're starting and ending at zero, but this idle up phase, once we spin the motor up and do our self calibration, these on all of the tests is exactly the same. Where when we're spinning the motor up, the low RPM one spins up to low speed and the, the full RPM spins up to high. So this, these torque values are different for every single test and everything past here is going to be different because the motor is spun up to a different throttle value. But for this first four second here this is everything spun up to idle rpm so all of these values should be the same and and these values are are pretty ugly and what we're seeing here these uh we're not actually seeing multiple uh, traces there but you're seeing phasing artifacts as our our sampling rate is coming falling in and out of phase with a much higher frequency uh amount of noise and it was something that was able to isolate in later tests but for these purposes we can just take a long average of these values and we can still bring them on top of each other so what if we load all of these up and zero all of them together now we'll see the beginning and end are both all over the place but now our spacing looks a lot more sane we still have some gaps and some drift at the top these are uh, bunched a little closer together but overall if you compare from these two tests and the scaling in these two uh, charts is a little different so you, you don't have to mind that but like all of these big gaps here in the middle are basically gone and in, until we hit the uh, the really high RPMs where noise is a bigger problem just full stop we're seeing much better results and in the efficiency chart it cleans things up beautifully well compare again to that first one all of these uh, results that are stuck next to each other go away and you can see we get a much cleaner um, value spread. Um, down here, we don't have these uh, chunks of, of mysteriously high efficiency in the mid-band, um, except down at the very low RPM. These, this is actually over 100% efficiency, so obviously also completely wrong, um, but just uh, harder to test really, really uh, low RPM because the torque values are, are very uh, low on the torque arm. But up high, this looks way better and is much more what we expect, especially comparing against our RPM graphs. We've still got, you know, the you see the evidence of noise uh, in there, but the overall torque values, the peak torque that we get from each uh, throttle value seem to line up really well. The spacing between each of these ones is really consistent. And this is something that's a lot more confidence inspiring. This doesn't seem to be as big a problem doing the thrust tests. I'm not exactly sure what's causing this sort of thing. Like I said, I'll, all of this uh, noise I've managed to get rid of 
um, by uh, working on isolation on the thing, but getting rid of the noise doesn't actually solve this problem. Even um, even when things are clean, we still get these offset values. Um, I've tried it with uh, additional preload, with like a, a rigid uh, screw preload, and with a, a hanging weight preload. Um, I uh, ran into a bunch of problems with, I think, uh, I was using silicon pads uh, as isolation and the silicon uh, seeming to creep under load, where uh, when you have it under load for a short period of time, it doesn't want to release all the way when you've got a, a preload pushing down on it as well, and that causing additional, um, even bigger offsets than this. But the most that I can figure is that for whatever reason, this load cell or perhaps even something in the load cell amplifier uh, it does not like being loaded and then unloaded so as long as we keep pressure on the load cell and we zero out at a very low value here and then just don't let up then we get much more consistent results if you spin the motor up and I have apply a torque and then I slow the motor down and spin the motor up a second time then I get this drift in those results as well so unfortunately it doesn't give me a perfect perfect zero because I have to spin the motor up to get this very very tiny amount of torque applied to the torque arm to zero out so my absolute peak reading is probably going to be just a little bit shy and when I'm running thrust tests which which have just the motor directly on the load cell we don't have these problems of loading and unloading and loading and unloading because the motor spins up at idle and the prop is pulling it forward even at idle and has that sort of preload amount and then we just run up to full throttle and stop from there there isn't time for the load cell to to bounce back and forth and give this kind of drift there is an amount of drift that I notice running uh, subsequent tests like the margin for error on it is fairly reasonable much smaller than the margin of error that we're seeing on the in these results here without this uh, zero point calibration method like this so I'm really curious if this is just related to uh, the cheap HX 711 uh, load cell amplifier uh, or if it's from the no name completely untraceable uh, cheap load cells uh, that I've gotten off Amazon and this does it across multiple load cells as well I have two five kilogram load cells and a one kilogram load cell they all do it equally it doesn't matter what gain levels I use super rigid mounting or anything like that this is just for some reason a constant problem with that so I am gonna try getting a known load cell from a named manufacturer uh, and I have another type of load cell amplifier coming and I'm going to try something a little different with that and hopefully we'll get some cleaner results uh, on top of this calibration method which would be nice but we'll just have to see when that comes in uh, and obviously as you can see from the results we're getting really close to getting some real dyno results in and as soon as I've satisfied my curiosity on this last little load cell thing I'll uh, finally start running uh, big batches of motors uh, that I have sitting around and uh, we'll see what we're looking at.